Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Plastow Board of Selectmen meeting for March 1st, 2021. I'd like to call this meeting to order at 6.30 p.m. Uh, Beth, may I have a roll call, please? Select Chair, Ms. Hart. Here. Select Vice Chair, Mr. Italian. Here. Select Mr. Kishka. Here. Select Mr. Glenn. Here. Select Mr. Roche. Here. And note for the record, Town Manager, Mr. Pearson, is joining us remotely. All right, thank you. Um, would you all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All righty. So um, our first um, item agenda is to um, approve the minutes of February 22nd, 2021. And before we do that, I'm sorry, I always forget to do this. Um, I've got to read our disclaimer. Sorry about that, guys. Um, the Board of Selectmen, in accordance with Governor Sununu's emergency order number 12, pursuant to Executive Order 2020-04, is authorized to meet electronically. The Board is utilizing GoToWebinar program of the GoToMeeting platform for this electronic meeting. All members of the Board have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during the meeting and throughout the GoToMeeting program, and the public has access to contemporaneously listen to the meeting as well. The link to the meeting is provided on the town website and the public may call in for comment at 603-382-5200 extension 290. They can watch the meeting on cable TV on channel 17 or they can live stream the meeting at livestream.com slash plastow. If you'd like to make comment or ask questions by email, please email Beth Hossack at plastow.com. And any questions or comments that are received by three o'clock on Monday afternoon will be read at the meeting. So um, back to our meeting minutes. May I have a motion to approve, please? Make a motion that we approve the February 22, February 22nd, 2021 Board of Selectmen minutes. I'll second that. All righty. Um, is there any discussion on the minutes at all? No. Alrighty, seeing none, I'm going to call for a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? All right, that motion carries 5-0-0. Zero, zero. Um, I don't see anyone here for public comment, so I'm just going to launch right into one of my favorite things, the dedication of the town report. And before I do that, I would like to publicly and personally thank Dee Voss, who is here with us tonight for the amazing job that she does every year in putting together this report. She pretty much single-handedly does all of it and with very little input from the um, town report committee, which is probably just as well. And I also would like to thank publicly Kathy Willis for doing such a great job in um, proofing um, the town report. So the theme of the town report was um, pretty easy to do. It was called In This Together. And um, after our bout with COVID, it seemed like that was pretty much the only theme that we could have picked for the town report. The dedication was a little bit trickier. Um, there were several people who should be nominated for this wonderful honor. But we thought that in the spirit of being in this together, um, I am very happy and proud to say that we dedicated this town report to all the citizens of Plastow because they embodied the spirit of community. And um, it's because of all of the people within our community that are, um, hi, <laughs> that, that um, all of our, our um, workings within the town received such positive feedback. So uh, citizens, this is dedicated to you. Thank you for all of your patience with us and your courtesy and your kindness, not just to us, but you know, to all the other people in town and to your neighbors and your friends. Um, so this is dedicated to you. And I believe you can pick up the town reports first thing tomorrow morning at Town Hall. And there will be some available at Candidates Night tomorrow night. It's also going to be posted online first thing in the morning. And I believe there's going to be some more at the library. So um, this report is for you. <laughs> so thank you, Dee. Very much appreciated. You did a beautiful job as usual. <laughs> All right, everyone start lining up for the pictures. 
<laughs> no, yeah, for next year, for this year, yeah. that's right, that's right. Um, so next on our agenda, um, we're going to review the election schedule. As you all know, elections are being held um, next Tuesday. Um, I just received word from Martha Fowler just probably half an hour ago that they're gonna be calibrating the voting machines at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. And I know several of you guys are working, so um, I made arrangements for Greg and I to be here tomorrow at 10 to make sure that the um, voting machines are calibrated so you guys are off the hook on that. Um, if it's okay with the rest of the board too, I'd like to do the same schedule that we did in the last couple of elections. The only issue is Julian's not gonna be here, and Jay, I believe you have a huge project that you're not gonna be able to be um, working as many hours as you did the last time. So, um, Greg, if you're gonna come in at seven, I'm gonna come in at 10 and spend the day, mm -hmm. and instead of you coming in at one and you coming in at 11, would you be willing to come in at four o'clock in the afternoon and stay, and then that way, um, Julian can be outside with his sign, and then if you can make it just to count ballots or whenever you can manage to get will, in. My plan is to be here like at the election at either 4 or 5 o'clock. Perfect. And then I'll be there the rest of the night. All right, yeah, because the most important part is for us to count the ballots, and even though there will probably be less than 1,000 people voting, um, there's going to be a whole bunch of ballots that we're going to have to separate out and count. So. Um, hopefully we will go through it as well as we did yeah. um, the last time. So if you guys are okay with that, go ahead, Julian. No, if, if you can ask the moderator if there's anything I, I am allowed to do, I'll sure. help out if I sure. can. I feel kind of guilty. No, no, don't. You right. shouldn't feel guilty. <laughs> All right, so if there's no more further questions on that, um, I would like to go to the appointment of the Rec Commission members, and I think there's a couple of them here. So, Jay, I'm going to turn that piece of the um, agenda over to you if you would like to do that. Um, okay. Thank you. I, I don't have the appointments in front of me, but um, the Rec Commission had uh, two alternate members, um, Leah McKean and uh, Melissa Marr, um, that participated in regular meetings as well, and the seats opened up for um, regular positions. So they requested appointments of Leah McKean and Melissa Marr. So I know if one of you would like to come up and this is Jen, but. Hi, I'm Jen. Hi, Jen. <laughs> Hi, Jen. <laughs> so Melissa couldn't be with us tonight because she is also a leader of a Boy Scout troop or a Cub Scout troop. So she's with her kids, but she gave me something to read to you. Excellent, great, thank you. So, yeah. sit, right sit by the mic, and, yep. Talk right into the mic. Leah, you can come over, uh, I think. Yep. No? <laughs> okay. So it says, good evening. I want to thank Mrs. Gussler for speaking on my behalf tonight. As many of you, many of you have already know me as I stood before the board a couple of years ago. I am Melissa Marr. I'm a resident of Plastow. I'm a mother of three kids, ages 11, 7, and 2. I grew up wow. in Plastow, I moved away for school, and eventually returned seven years ago. I chose to move my family back to this area because I remember it being a wonderful childhood. It is a great, it is a great place to raise my family. I remember old home day town events and a real sense of small town community. When I was back, when I was back, I realized things had indeed changed a bit. Plasto is not the same small, it's not as small as it once was. Mm -hmm. But all of the events and fun community happenings were still there. Over the past seven years, I noticed things and made com comments. I was told, you can't say much if you're not involved. Since then, I've been the president of the, the Pace Plasto Area Ex Commerce Exchange. I volunteered for TYSL soccer and joined recreation committee and most recently became a den leader for Cub Scouts. Being involved in my children's life and upbringing and being an active part of the community is very important to me. I hope you will all recommend me as a full member of the recreation committee, but if any of you feel you need to speak with me further, I will leave my contact with Mrs. Gussler for you to share with you. I apologize for not being in attendance this evening, but at the moment, my son and our commitment to scouts is taking precedence. Thank you for your time and acknowledgement my statement. 
Nice. That's excellent. Thank She's you wonderful. so much. And then this is Leona Keene. Fresh chair just got out of work. That was my fault. <laughs> oh, that, no, that's all right. Would you just like to tell us a little bit about yourself? I'm Leah. Um, I have lived in town for about five and a half years now. I sat before you maybe a little over a year and a half, around a year and a half ago, to become an alternate on the commission. Um, since then, I've been regularly attending meetings, being part of um, recreation, learning more about this town and everything that goes into it as I go. I can be very passionate <laughs> about it, so I apologize. Um, but I do want to stay on the Recreation Commission. I love being part of this town. I think the amazing things that this committee does is shocking to me. I didn't know how much went into it before I got involved in it. And I really want to be part of educating our community, community about it and also just making sure these things keep going. Um, when I moved here, my son was five. So he was just starting in school yeah, yeah. and he loves it here. And everything that I ever heard from family members is I can't believe how much your town does mm. for your, your citizens, for your kids, for everybody. And I love being part of that. And I think it takes all of us to do that. And I'm grateful for that. And so I am grateful for the opportunity to get to help on the commission. Well, we thank you very much for volunteering your time and your talents and you know it's true it takes a village and um, a lot of people are so enthusiastic about contributing and that's exactly what this town needs to keep it vibrant and alive and, and we most humbly thank you for volunteering to do this because it's not an easy task as you know because i you've been on on it as an alternate so yeah. thank you again for your willingness to actually um, come on to the rec commission formally and um, have fun this year because you guys are going to be really need to be very creative to, to be able to continue some of these programs during COVID. Well, <laughs> I, I, I have to give credit back there what it, yep. where it's due. She's been very creative. She's and a genius. She I know. Really she, is. Is. she comes up with things out of nowhere. I know. It's but scary. No, <laughs> thank you guys for your support too. It is because our honor. Yes. It, means, it means a lot to our kids because our kids get so excited about these things. And I think sometimes just the rolling through, people forget. Yeah. But they... They love this, and I know that the Elder Affairs group loves it too, and so I just appreciate your support. Awesome. Oh, you have it, yes. Any of the board members want to make any comment before she leaves? Yeah, no. anybody? Or Bill, would you like to? Oh, yeah, come on up. I'm going to move. <laughs> move. Well, no, we're, ha we're happy to have both Melissa and Leah. They've done a great job. They show up at all our events. They're at all the meetings, and they've jumped right in, and they participate. Yeah. But the one thing I wanted to really bring up is we just got what, hot news, Jen. We got hot news. Oh, we, we, were, we were able to get a hold of the Easter Bunny. <gasps> so on April 3rd, obviously we can't do the egg hunt that we did for years past and things like that. But we were able to get the Easter Bunny to commit to coming to Plastow on April 3rd from 9 to 12 oh, on Town awesome. Hall to take pictures. Okay. We're going to have a photo shoot with these. Excellent. So everyone will, will be able to have a picture taken with the Easter Bunny. Now, does the Easter Bunny provide our Reese's Pieces eggs to any of the board members? Because that happens to be my personal favorite. Show up. We'll make sure you have an egg. Thanks. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. All right. All right. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you guys for doing that. The kids But that just came that. down today. We finally got a hold of the Easter Good. Bunny, so we were able to to pull something Excellent. off for Easter for the for everyone. Excellent. We'll definitely we'll get get that up on the uh, on the uh, website. Yeah, we do have something up now. And it's on the red. And the okay. only thing we're asking is that families register. Oh. So okay. we can socially distance as they come in. Yep, that was the request perfect. from Denise. And you guys are an old hand at doing that because I've been to a couple of your events last year that yep. you were you had that locked and loaded. You did a great yep. job with that. Okay. So great. we were able to at least do something for Easter again. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Well, thank you guys so much for all you do. And um, thank you, ladies. And you guys have a good night and um, have fun this year. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay, so um, our next item agenda is um, to approve the track committee charter. And um, thank you, Jay, for working so hard on that. He took several charters that had existed in the past and kind of resynthesized it into a much more updated and detailed um, 
charter. So we're here tonight. I believe he gave it to us a few weeks ago, and we've had some comments about going back and forth with it. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Jay, and, and hopefully we can put this to bed tonight. So um, the, the charter, um, there's been some feedback with some of the uh, potential members on the committee um, on you know, some of the things that they'd like to try to do. And I sent out a draft to the, the selectmen and everyone mm -hmm. seemed to have reviewed it and, and gave me feedback. So I incorporated all those changes within the charter itself. Um, and I don't know if you guys have any questions or other changes that you'd like to make to it, but um, I'd like to try to get this um, ratified because uh, we're going to have our first track meeting on Thursday at 7 p.m. Uh, via Zoom, um, D and Dean have uh, set up the Zoom for us and stuff. So I'd like to be able to hand this over to them um, Thursday night. So. All right. So go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, where's the meeting going to be? It's going to be on um, on a go-to meeting. It's virtual. Um, I believe uh, D is going to post that prior to probably Wednesday or or at least tomorrow or Wednesday um, to post officially post the meeting. Um, and then there'll be a link available for people to join. If you'd like to attend, I can actually, I can send you the invite. Yeah, I'd like to. Or anyone else. Now anybody in town can do that. Um, anyone can attend. It's a public meeting. Um, so they can join through the, uh, the go to meeting um, and participate via that meeting. So, oh, okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Julian. Yeah, where, where are the two locations that will be posted since they'll now be official meetings? Um, I believe on the, the website and uh, probably downstairs. Yeah, yeah, the the town hall. The town, town hall, too. Yeah. Right, right. So we, still have to, we have to meet all the requirements of a regular meeting right. now. So Absolutely. We have to do the 24-hour notice and all that. And I know you're not probably not, people that have been up to now but weren't used to that only because they didn't need to. They weren't officially a committee yet. Mm-hmm. Yes, Beth, between Beth and, and Dee, we're going to get that all posted so we're in compliance and, and make sure it's uh, everything's proper. So. Okay, excellent, cool. excellent. So hopefully, go ahead, Greg, yeah. I was going to make a motion that we ratify this track um, charter as it stands. Um, and also, I just what I'd like to say, I think this is an excellent uh, template. We should consider using this for all of our committees. This is very, very thorough, was mm -hmm. well thought out, mm -hmm. provided a lot of input into this. Did a great job, Jay. Yeah. Yep, as always. I'll second it. All right. Um, so if there's no further discussion, um, all those in favor of ratifying the track charter say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay, that no, motion. I had a comment. I, I really like the other things that were put in this, like you say, the format. And I'm really excited about some of the things. I haven't seen a Participate. I've used to participate in free cycle and other plate views before, and I'll tell you this: this is not limiting itself. This is a really good charter to look at all the options, and it's, if it's followed through, this looks like it has a really good chance of being extremely mm -hmm. successful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So um, all okay. So that motion will carry five zero zero, and you, you guys have got your work cut out for you. It's very um, aggressive, but I'm sure that if you do some of the follow-up that your charter has recommended, you'll be able to have a really excellent, excellent program and really kind of turn things around as far as recycling and plastic. So thank you for taking on that extra project, Jay. That was amazing. No problem. <laughs> okay. All right. So our next item agenda is street. Um, do you want me to just mention about the other two members that? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, forward? that's right. I'm so sorry. Yes, because we just actually signed off in the appointment. Yeah. Please forgive me. Go ahead. Oh, that's all right. Uh, we also, after last week's meeting, um, there were two other folks that were interested in joining the committee, uh, Marianne Little from Canterbury Forest and um, Ant, uh, Richard Anthony, Anthony from Village Way. Village Way. Uh, so um, they sent in their letters of interest and, and there was an appointment mm -hmm. there for you to sign. Right. So right. Um, it, it, we're going to have a full committee right out the gate. So awesome. it will be good. That's great. That's great. Yep. So welcome. Do you have any alternates yet? Um, there are no alternates yet, but there's, I believe, two alternates. So you have a couple openings for alternates? Yes. Yep. Okay. So, so Jay, how many members are on the committee so, so far? Seven. Including the two tonight? 
Yes. Oh, great. That's a that's a good and number. And then there's room for two alternates, so we could great. solicit for two alternates and, mm -hmm. and have them, you know, attend attend and participate. So great. great. All right. Good. Well, you're off to a good start. So um, that's very encouraging to hear that. Okay. So next item agenda is the um, street light repair policy. Um, this is part of our action item list, and as I was kind of reviewing it. Um, I thought we could knock off a couple of these before I leave. And so um, there was a request for a policy for maintenance for the streetlights. So I was able to um, speak with uh, Dee Voss, who is pretty much in charge of all the street lighting project. And she reached out to Affinity, who um, did the street lighting project for us to ask them for their help and advice. And we were told by Affinity that we currently have a contract with Unitil as far as maintenance is concerned. And they recommended to us that we stay with Unitil because they are the most cost effective and the quickest as far as response is concerned. And the only thing that they did recommend was that the town purchase a couple of spare light bulbs um, so that they could just you know plug and play. And apparently there's already been three replacements on light bulbs to date, two were faulty, but they're under warranty. And I guess one of them a critter got into and ate it. So we did have to pay for that one because that wasn't covered under the warranty. But um, is, if you as a future board, you know, would like to requisition a couple of those spare parts, I'm sure uh, Mark will okay it and Greg will pay for it. So um, it seems as if that can be taken off our action item list, Beth, if you want to do that. If you guys are in agreement to continue with Unitil, it seems to be the easiest um, solution to the maintenance agreement okay uh, yes um, I, I, I think this is a good move at this point but it I, should periodically be reviewed because I agree. things and prices change mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um, I don't know even if it's yearly or every other year or something it should be just be looked at somehow reviewed yeah so so it, do, does the board want to take a formal vote on this or would you like to just have a consensus of continuing with our current contract I'll make the motion to go forward with this recommendation. Okay. Second. All right. Thank you, Julian. All right. So um, if you guys have any more questions or if there's any further discussion, I'll entertain it now. Jay, no? Oh. I can always tell when you're thinking because. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. So if there's no further yeah, questions so cool. or anything, all those in favor of continuing with the um, contract say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? All right, that motion carries five zero zero. Yeah, I like it when he thinks. Yeah, I, I love it when he thinks. He's, he thinks of really interesting things. Okay, so the next um, item on the agenda is to approve the public works garage policy. And this was work that was done by Greg, and he put together a very, very intricate and comprehensive and did a ton of work um, looking at this particular policy, and I know he researched a couple of other towns for this and put together a synthesis of what we thought would be best for Plasto. And I know he sent that out to the board as well a few weeks ago for you to look at and make comments on. So can I turn that over to you, Greg, sure. to just explain a little bit? Yeah. Thanks. Um, so we did, we, we looked at a number of different towns that was provided by Beth, and the Northwood one was the most complete. So we, we basically borrowed very heavily from that and then tailored the individual paragraphs to revert back to Plastow. Um, we got great input from all the selectmen as well as the town manager, uh, and we provided that input into this. So basically, I, it's not mine anymore. It basically belongs to the entire board and the town manager. So I really appreciate all the participation of all of them. I think it's a good starting point. Okay. And um, one issue did come up, and that is whether or not this should be part of the town code. And we did a little research on that, and that would require two, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Public hearing. Excuse me? Public, public hearing. Public hearings. public hearings, thank you. We require two public hearings. So the recommendation is to leave this as a selectman's policy for the time being. And then at a later time, we decide that we want to pick a part of the uh, town code, we can, we can formalize that. Um, but this will allow us to be able to have something that we can be uh, receptive to people who want to use the facilities, yet at the same time make sure that services are not being interrupted by, um, by renting um, the buildings or renting the space. 
I'd like to make a motion to accept that policy as a, as a selectman's policy. Excellent, thank you. Okay, may I have a second? second? Okay, Jay's gonna second that. Um, any further discussion on it? Go ahead, Jay. I'd just like to say, uh, great job um, putting this all together. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's a lot of work that goes into this stuff, so. Yep. Yeah, and I wanna, thank you. Thank you. I wanna say the same thing. It's a good job, it was very thorough. We needed a policy, and I think the town doesn't wanna get, even though it's a great facility, we don't wanna get into the uh, function hall business. Right. Um, <laughs> yes. Well, even though I think recreation rents out their space to supplement the, their programs. They do, yeah. Maybe something to look in the future, but not right now. Yeah, yeah. 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 Great, yeah. great job. Thank you. All right, all right. So if there is no more further comment or discussion, I'll take a vote. All those in favor to approve, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? All right, that motion carries 5-0-0. Okay. Um, our next item agenda is, um, actually it's, it, it's um, the uh, town building policy. And again, this was on our action item list. And Julian had requested um, this, and it was to be discussed um, on February 28th. So we're, we're as close to February as we could get. But I'm going to turn this part over to you, Julian, so you can talk a little bit about what you um, wanted to, uh, to do. Yeah, um, we've had some incidents in the past, especially when we started doing actual projects. I remember even during the um, building of the safety complex, even prior to this town manager, um, I remember they were digging out there doing some excavating. What did they do? They, they destroyed the fiber optic lines coming from town <laughs> hall. Why? Because they didn't know they were there. Because um, town buildings don't go through the same process as any other construction projects through a planning board. And I think we've had problems where something happened way in the past. We were doing the uh, highway, the, the public works garage, and they ended up digging into an old fuel tank that was down under the ground. Um, I think they also hit the, they also hit some uh, water pipes that were in that area. Again, it's not specifically documented because it was, again, it was public property. So, um, and I think even here in the town green, we've put electrical lines to, to lights and poles. What happens when we have to excavate later on? Do we have a map that says where they are before you start to dig? So, and it's not just a matter of inconvenience, it's a matter of safety, because if you run into power, line, power lines, it could cause an injury. Um, it causes the facilities to go down. You hit a water pipe, you have to shut everything down, so it could be an uh, inconvenience to the community as well as a, sometimes a huge expense. But it was also discussed with the planning director, mm -hmm. and I got this from Francine because she's a representative on the planning board. Even though we wanted to make a policy that putting a policy in place at this time could also cause a lot of complications with projects and cause a lot of red tape. What we don't want to do in this process is require engineering drawings and things like that that have to be submitted, which are extremely expensive, which that is something the town doesn't have to go through a process at this point. So except for what is required by law, naturally. So what we kind of decided is better just put a motion and a direction to the town manager so that in the future, that anything that gets done is somewhat documented to at least a degree we know where things are so that we don't cause future damage. Yeah. So I, I, I'm gonna make a motion and we can discuss that more if you want. Sure. It, it, the motion's basically made so it doesn't tie anybody's hands and it doesn't require excessive work by t the town or causing to bring in outside um, expenses. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna make the motion. I motion that the town manager provide adequate documentation to the planning department on, a, on any physical additions or modifications to town property that it could affect future work plans and that the planning department save and maintain this information for future use. Okay. The motion doesn't micromanage anybody on how they do it. I think it's just, it's the intent. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Mark, I'm just gonna ask you for your um, input. Was that sufficient to um, satisfy the spirit of what the board is intending to do? Yes, and uh, just for the record, since I've been here, I've always bought, brought the projects right. uh, to the planning board and have also, also um, had engineering teams drawn up for um, the projects and I, I have kept track of um, all of the plans um, that have happened for construction projects in my tenure here but I do understand the intent is not only now but into the future so I have no concerns okay great thank you 
All right, does anybody else have any further questions or discussions? Or do you want to um, amend this motion at all? It seems like it's pretty comprehensive. Thank you for doing that, Julian. Um, so if I, there's no more comment or discussion, I'm going to call for a vote. All those in favor to adopt this, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? All right, that motion also carries 500. So you guys have done a great job. Thank you for putting all these little things together for us to finish up our work before we start voting next week. That's great. Yeah, that's why I make sure this was nothing against our town manager because he's done everything and always yes, informed us of everything. Yep. And he's, and he's, into the, he's into the construction business, yep. believe me. He knows what he's doing. But this was basically, we found this out because of things that happened in the past. Right. That and we just don't want it to happen in the it's future. It's not our current <laughs> town manager, it's future town managers and yeah. also future boards too, because yes. not all of us are going to be here forever either. So that was a good idea that you did that. So um, Beth, if you could remove from our action items number one and number four, that'll start out the board with some uh, a fewer, fewer items that they have to deal with for the rest of this year. So thank you for doing that. Okay. Um, could I ask you, Mark, if you are ready to uh, give us your town manager's report? Um, yes, I'm willing to do that. Um, I was wondering if you wanted to entertain for a couple minutes to answer a, a citizen or a voter uh, her concerns. I sent to the board an email I received today, mm -hmm. and I was wondering if the board wanted to uh, address um, address that on um, uh on camera so that it can it, it can also um, be information passed on to the public if they're listening. Okay, well, I did want to let you know that I actually did respond to all of her queries by email um, because I guess it was my thought that if, if she was had to email these questions, she was more than likely not watching any of our meetings or deliberative sessions. So I, I took the initiative to email her um, but we can certainly have the board discuss this in public right now. We have plenty of time to do it. We're well ahead of our schedule. So um, we can do that before we do your um, town manager's report. Um, so basically, um, Cynthia Noyes had sent to uh, Mr. Pearson a number of questions regarding um, different articles. And board, if you would like to maybe, uh, you know, I'll take, you could take turns responding to them. Um, the first article, 11. Um, Mrs. Noyes um, wanted to know, um, and I quote, she said, it alludes to the landfill closure. I have heard nothing about this. Is it true that the landfill is scheduled to close? And if so, when will this take place? And what, if anything, will be done to take its place? Um, so would anybody like to answer that? Well, I'll just say this Well, you one. know what? Can I, can I save you for the electric one? I'd like to have everybody just do an okay, answer and not me. save you for that. All right, I'll save you the best for last. So would anyone like to jump in and answer that question? Go ahead, Greg, and I'll, I'll take you next, Jay. Okay, so the, the land, ca the, the land, um, the fossil <coughs> landfill is actually closed and we put a, a clay cap over it. And because of all this trash finally dissolves and starts to crumble and condenses, the actual clay cap starts to decrease. And in some spots where the depression causes a, a tremendous amount of drop, water then can, 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 can be um, filled up in these clay bowls and can the, this runoff can then mix with the trash that's inside of the landfill and have the potential of, of polluting or contaminating uh, wells in the, in the, in the area. So what we are doing is we have done all the engineering for this. We are going to repair the cap and, and replace the spots where the land has depressed and to make sure that the water runs off of the, land, the landfill off to the outsides and doesn't settle inside of the landfill itself. So that's what the, the process is. The last year we basically paid for all of the permits and, and the uh, engineering work needing to be done before we even start construction. This year we are asking for a warrant to basically to finish and close this uh, and, and do all the actual construction necessary to make this uh, more permanent. Now, like, like anything, uh, we closed the landfill almost 30 years ago. Uh, things happen, 
and sometime in the future, hopefully it's going to be a long, long time, we may have to revisit this to make sure that the, the, the cap is sufficient and it's doing its job. And this is just following DES rules that the state set um, and basically we're just getting out in front and taking care of this ahead of time versus being uh, audited by the DS to take care of it. And um, I, I'd also like to mention too that the money that we're requesting to um, pay for this is coming out of our unassigned fund balance. So we are not asking our taxpayers to increase their property taxes to take care of this. That's really, really important. Uh, for people to know, especially since, you know, COVID does not appear to be going away anytime soon. And, you know, people are being very, very careful about watching um, their spending. So thank you for that explanation, Greg. So the next one has to do with the track committee. So Jay, you're the next natural person to take that if you wouldn't mind giving it. You want me to read out her question? Do you have it or? Yeah, I can. Okay, go ahead. Um, Article 15 is a citizen's petition to continue recycling. Although I wish the program could continue as it, as I understand that the cost of renewing such a contract would be prohibitive due to lack of sources to take the items. If this article passes, do you have any idea the annual uh, cost annually to the town? So the citizens petition at deliberative session was amended to a $0 amount. It originally was $295,000. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was a number that was put forward in the citizens petition to help fund uh, trash and recycling through the for the for a year um, prior to deliberative session the town manager was able to uh, negotiate a contract extension with our current service provider JRM um, to continue with trash and recycling until the end of the year so the extension begins July 1st 2021 and it, it expires on December 31st, 2021. So um, there was a motion made at deliberative session to increase the uh, operating budget in the amount of $100,000 to uh, be able to fund that for the rest of the year, um, as well as the, uh, the carts that are associated with a automated system. Um, so uh, it, it, trash and recy or recycling isn't going away until um, I wouldn't say until, sorry. I <laughs> Don't even say until. <laughs> it, right now we have trash recycling until the end of the year um, and we're going to start working on uh, recommendations for a trash and recycling contract um, to, uh, to get that finalized by the end of the year uh, or very uh, hopefully sooner than that, but um, mm. to finalize and, and get a vendor um, under RFP or get an RFP out to vendors so that we can start the process. So right. short answer is uh, no. Right. I and, and I think she asked for an approximate cost and I believe we had estimated that it was going to cost this year between $789,000 and $803,000 for the trash and recycling. And obviously it's a moving target, but that's the approximate cost of what that would, would yeah. be. Thank you. All right, thanks, Jay. All right. No um, John, would, do you feel like tackling the next um, question that you had about the discontinuance? I, I know you kind of weren't here. You were in no, Aruba. I, I'm, I'm not familiar with that. All right, so I'll jump in and do that. And then, Julian, I'll save you the best for last, all right? <laughs> so um, I like them all. Article 17 advocates discontinuing the land and building capital reserve fund, which I oppose. I believe that all communities should have a dedicated fund available to purchase any important parcel that may become available. If this passes and the funds revert to the general fund, do I assume that the town could no longer buy any property at all, or at least without considerable effort and legal process? Um, so I responded um, back to Mrs. Noyes, Ms. Noyes, um, by explaining to her that the town already has approximately $20 million worth of property that the town owns that the assessed value is a little bit more than $20 million. This property is not generating property taxes. And so it's really unlikely, um, not only will we need to purchase any more properties, we're actually trying to sell some property to gain some taxable income, but the, um, 
The capital reserve fund has a little over $114,000 in it right now. And if you've been looking around at the cost of real estate, that's really not anything uh, significant enough for us to be able to purchase any kind of property. So we thought that that money, instead of being parked in a capital reserve fund and just sitting there not doing anything, it may be better utilized if it was discontinued and that money was put back into the unassigned fund balance so it could be used to pay for um, other expenditures. So that was our rationale for doing that. All right, go ahead, yeah, Can I add to that to ask, answer part of the rest of her question? It doesn't tie the hands of the community. If we actually needed a piece of property that wasn't one of the ones we owned, it would just go to warrant article and the voters can decide mm -hmm. whether they wanted to spend the money on it, which it's just the best way to do it. Okay. If it's just the money sitting in an account, three selectmen, even though there was a public hearing, three selectmen could have spent that money. I'd rather see it go to a town vote to see if the community, if it's something the community wants. Right. So it doesn't tie the hands of anything in the future because it would have had a public hearing anyway in the process of buying land. And like Francine said, it couldn't have bought anything anyway. <laughs> so it really wasn't a necessary fund. It was just sitting there. Right. And um, it, it doesn't keep us, if we ever needed to, from doing it. We would just have to go through the process mm -hmm. of asking the people. Okay. Good. Thank you, Julian. All right. So the last question that she had was on Article 18. Do you have that question that she wrote out? If you could read it. And if you don't have it, I'll read it. And you can explain it. It's in the email. Let me get to the other page. All right. You got it? No, I don't All right, have well, her original I'll read question. It. I'll read it and you can explain yep. it because you're, you're the guru on this one. Um, article 18, I'm not sure I quite understand the possible ramifications of this article. This is the energy um, electricity option that, that you port forth. Um, although I like to save money, I worry about changing to possibly newer, less experienced companies to do so. Think of the recent debacle in Texas. The article seems to imply that any resident can opt out, but does that mean that all residents would automatically be opted in whether they want to be in it or not? So, okay, uh, right. this is a multi-faceted <laughs> question. First of all, the, if you want to relate it to the what happened in Texas, New Englanders, we're ready for bad weather. We expect the cold, we expect the freezing, and we expect ice storms that'll happen even if it's a decade from now. So we're not, things that happen in Texas are, are not going to happen here. We'd have to have some real major world catastrophe for something like that to happen here. So we're prepared for that aspect of it. What the Warren article is asking is, it's basically, in simple words, asking permission from the voters to allow t the town, working with a lot of other towns, be to be able to negotiate a lower electrical rate be by, using our, by using the numbers involved, like a major corporation might, because they use a lot of electricity and they have the numbers, they have bargaining power. This allows us to group up with some other communities doing the same thing, get the bargaining power to get a better rate. Now, if you yourself at some point can negotiate a better rate with some private company, you can opt out at any time and get that. But you'll automatically get this better rate if we can negotiate it. And if you find something better, you can opt out at any time. So it's just a basically a new law in New Hampshire. That's why it's coming up now. That we didn't have that ability before until the new RSA was written to incorporate it. And it basically is modeled after Massachusetts, the Massachusetts law. Yeah. That they, yeah. And it's been very successful there to allow people, not just big corporations, but a lot of money to negotiate, but let the regular people negotiate and get a better rate. Okay. And can you also just talk a little bit about the committee that needs to be formed before you guys even go about moving this forward? Yes. This also says in the Warren article, or, or in the description, one of the two, that we'll have to form a committee, a council, whatever you want to call it. And it's just some, a group of people that will then work in those negotiations toward. But also, you're not going to want to do this in a vacuum. You're going to work, want to work with the other communities that are doing the same thing. And there's actually, we joined a, gr a group many months back mm -hmm. and that's just a group that works together with communities so that you have a lot of experience and you have a lot of knowledge involved and you don't have to pay for all the uh, research and everything on your own okay. so the committee is basically just to form a charter which you have to submit to the state because you can't just go doing this stuff haphazardly that the law requires a charter 
and a select group of people assigned so that it's all on the up and up and transparent. Excellent, great explanation. Okay, so hopefully um, that answers Ms. Noy's questions. And um, as I said, I emailed her the answers to these questions as well. So hopefully if anybody else is confused or not clear on it, we have cleared all of that stuff up. So uh, Mark, if you are now ready to do your town report, that would be great. Yes. Um, so I had thought with all the correspondence with uh, the landfill cap permits that we actually had every permit in hand. And I was at a conversation today, a meeting today with Sanborn Head, and uh, it's still still kind of confusing to me. But we're, the way they explained it is, is that they have to submit one more final review of the alteration of terrain um, uh, permit because the regulations change and they're incorporating in the, the conditions for the New Hampshire Fish and Game. And so my understanding after the meeting today is, is that it's a technical um, submittal that they're submitting uh, and that um, we're expecting that we'll have everything that we need shortly after town meeting vote. So that's the best explanation I can give you. It's very confusing. They admit it is very confusing. Uh, you know, they, they send us paperwork that appears. We've got everything we need, but technically we, they're gonna submit one more document to the, um, uh, the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services for their approval. But all in all, we, we are right on top of it and um, we, we do not expect any problems. Uh, the MS4 uh, permitting, we're working with Normando and Associates with supplemental material for the MS4 stormwater permit. Um, I am continuing to work on the MOU for the point of distribution with the Southeast Central Public Health Network. Uh, if you've been following the news, uh, you know, we're still in phase 1A and 1B, and they haven't finished up 1B yet, and uh, we're scheduled to help out the regional network with um, phase 2A and 2B and then 3A and 3B. So um, we're not there yet, um, it's, everything's been pushed out, but as you know, there's new developments with, um, with vaccines that just came out. So uh, there's a big push nationally to get more vaccines out sooner. So uh, it, it's a moving target, but nonetheless, we are finalizing all of the terms and conditions on the MOU um, with um, our insurance carrier to make sure that we have a comprehensive MOU. Um, I have continued to meet with our town attorney about uh, assessing legal issues, uh, and that's all I will say on that topic. Um, trash and recycling, I worked on a timeline and submitted it to uh, Selectman, uh, all the Selectmen, but also to Selectman DeRoche so um, realistically, the track committee should have the portion of their work. They can continue to work into the future on a lot of issues, but what they should have is anything that they, um, that's related to the RFP that is expected to go out um, later this year, they should at least have those specific recommendations to the board within 90 days. So then the board and I can move forward with the RFP and um, the advertising, and then the uh, results back to the Board of Selectmen for a decision. Um, sale of town-owned land correspondence in your folder tonight. You will see a memo to the Planning Board and Conservation for their review of the pro proposed sale of town-owned land, the two pieces. Uh, after their review and recommendation comes back to the Board, the Board will then decide to uh, uh, whether they're gonna sell the land or keep the land. Uh, and then if they decide to sell either or both pieces of land, uh, they would have their second public hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, Town-owned facilities policy, you adopted that tonight. Uh, we're working on the organizational chart and job descriptions. Of course, we already have the job descriptions. We're working on the organizational chart. Uh, Sluckman DeRoche, in a, in a clarification phone call I had with him, um, also wanted an organizational chart on the elected or appointed positions as well. So we're just going to add that to like make up a second organizational chart for those positions. Um, right to know requests are still coming in. Um, they're coming in daily. Um, at this rate, you can expect over 400 requests by the end of the year. I have no idea what that total cost will be. 
So let me just clarify one thing that may be a misnomer. There's been some comments made by different people about they don't understand why this is complicated or why it um, can't just be, you know, information just can't be turned around and given back to people, you know, contemporaneously, you know, as soon as they submit it, we just give it to them. It's much more complicated than that. There's, just to give you an idea, the RSA 91A is very simple if you look at it in terms of it being a law, but there is a memorandum that came out in 2015 by the uh, Attorney General for the state of New Hampshire that's 155 pages long. That is how you apply the law. And there's, there's, there's do's and don'ts, and uh, it's very specific. In addition to the 155 page memorandum of law on how to respond to 91A requests, there is ongoing Superior Court and Supreme Court decisions almost on a weekly or monthly basis that is handling 91A requests from around the state that is setting new case law on how you respond to or what you do or what you give or what you don't give as far as 91A. Last week, the town of Salem was brought to court for a 91A alleged infraction. And in fact, the Superior Court judge ruled in favor of the plaintiff uh, and the attorney representing the plaintiff and the town of Salem was required to give the information requested within five days and was assessed legal fees for not complying. So this is ongoing. And um, I just want everybody to understand the gravity of what we're dealing with. Uh, the water operator contract interviews are scheduled for March 16th. That's an internal review board with uh, myself, uh, Greg Colby, um, Steve Dufilly, and uh, Underwood engineers with the apparent two uh, low uh, competitive bidders. Um, so we're gonna have that, and then we're gonna bring all the results back to the Board of Selectmen for your review and consideration for you to make the, the, the final decision and you, for you to hold your interviews if that's what you wanna do. Um, I have um, been in contact with and signed an agreement with DTC lawyers um, that the Board approved. Um, to negotiate a successor agreement for the cable, uh, Comcast Cable Franchise Agreement. Um, all current conditions and revenues remain in effect until a successor agreement is negotiated. Um, that, that extension that I signed is till June. So um, we're hoping to have this wrapped up before uh, June 30th. Um, we've been notified by the Teamsters to represent the um, police union and um, this is the beginning of the collective bargaining negotiations. They sent us a certified letter requesting to stop the process and they requested um, supporting documents. Um, I've set up a negotiation team who will negotiate and bring the proposed uh, agreement to myself and the board of selectmen for their consideration and or approval. Uh, so uh, that is something that you're gonna hear about over the next uh, several months. Um, Cable TV, remote connections and platforms, um, because of the uh, intricacies and the things we've been, we've been experiencing with uh, connecting remotely, I've asked Dean to um, um, come back with uh, some recommendations. He's come back with recommendations that are similar to uh, what the uh, Timberlane Regional School is using. And uh, he has reported back to me some options and I told him to go ahead and to uh, to sign us up for those options. It, it provides for uh, more people to remote in, larger groups of people and so forth. So Dean is working on that now. And then I'll report back to the board as soon as I have more information. But um, I think we're gonna convert to the Zoom because the prior problems we had or concerns we had with security with Zoom have evidently been worked out. And it seems to be more of a, a universal platform that people are used to. So um, we're working on that, Dean, if, you know, in your travels, if you talk to Dean, you can, you can talk to him directly, he can report to you on what he's working on. Um, I signed a certificate of authorization for the grant funding extension related to the 24 hour coverage um, for the fire department. Um, Greg and I have been monitoring legislation, both federal and state with respect to 
uh, the federal and state aid to municipalities related to the coronavirus, the loss of revenue and grant funding, rooms and meals uh, revenue, and other financial aid. Uh, so we're monitoring. Um, it is a work in progress right now, and um, everybody's aware that um, cities and towns and states have been affected, and uh, there appears to be that appears to be a topic of conversation. And as uh, soon as we know about some uh, legislation that passes a, or is in the works, uh, you know, we'll, we'll let you know. Um, the New Hampshire Division of Economic Development contacted me directly to ask if Plastow had, or if they knew of a developer or a landowner had a large piece of commercial land along the 125 corridor for a large warehouse space. Um, if you've been watching the news, they just built one up in Kingston. Um, they've also converted, I believe, the Lucent property down in uh, Massachusetts. There's another one over in uh, Hudson. Um, so there is, uh, there are companies out there that are looking for huge warehouse distribution space. Um, I referred this request to the planning director, John Cash. Um, the Utopia Lounge, I've uh, been contacted by an attorney representing Utopia Lounge. We spoke briefly about um, his concerns and our concerns and basically, um, I told him that um, there's regulations and there's uh, concerns by neighbors and uh, that uh, there'll be uh, public safety police details there so long as that there's any issues with public safety. And uh, you know there were concerns by neighbors. So I left it at that, but I just wanted to let the board know that um, I was contacted. Uh, I do not think at this time that there's any threat of any legal litigation. I think it was an inquiry and um, the attorney and I agreed that we would stay in contact with each other uh, should I come upon some more information that there's uh, something going on over there that needs to be addressed. Um, I would pass that along to him. Um, there is some elected and appointed officials training that is, is um, coming up that usually follows the uh, March elections. And um, so there, there's, there's the um, April and May 2021 elected and appointed officials, which is in your folder. It's two workshops and Laurie has set up for attorney Steve Buckley to be the presenter for both of those. Um, it will be remotely and we can set it up and on the, on the big screen over at the public works garage and have people actually in attendance there. And then there's another one from the New Hampshire Municipal Association that is also related to um, uh, people and, um, and, and the knowing your territory and so forth. So that is two more dates and we're gonna set that up as a group uh, and we're gonna, act, we're gonna ask to use and schedule the, that over at the Public Works Garage. One of the main reasons that we wanna keep track of elected and appointed officials from attending, uh, uh, that, that are gonna attend this is, is that we feel that there's a connection that um, if they are offered the training and they attend the training and that they know what their roles and responsibilities are, that that makes for a smoother elected and appointed officials to know where the law um, allows them to navigate. And any alternative, if somebody were to not attend the training that was offered and they were to go outside of their roles and responsibilities, their duties and violate the law, that they would be um, not indemnified by the town uh, because they didn't attend the training. So there's a, it's, a, it's a dual purpose is to keep the town from um, ostensibly being sued because an elected or appointed official goes outside of their roles and responsibilities or their duties, because we're gonna provide them with the training so that they know what their roles, responsibilities, and legally what they can and can't do. So that, and we'll keep track of the people that attend. As you know, we can't make somebody go to it, but we certainly can let them know that it's available. We can certainly let them know we recommend that they attend, but at the, the, the end result is, and we've had people that are elected and appointed have chosen not to go, not to participate. And, and the, the simple answer is, is that's fine. But if they create a legal situation that they violated the law, um, the, the, the feeling is, is that the town should not have to indemnify them for doing something that they shouldn't have done, that had they gone to the training, they would have known they, they shouldn't have done. So that we're gonna, we did this a couple of years ago and we're gonna do it again. Um, 
And then the last thing on my agenda is the, my report is the run for savages. I was contacted by Kristen uh, Savage and she's gonna run a virtual run for the savages. And, and so it will not be like the past event and she hopes to return to a normal operation in 2022. So that's all I have for tonight. All right. Thank you so much, Mark. Um, Julian has a question for you. I have a question on two of your points. I'll let you finish the whole thing first. On the right to no request lines, I know that one of the um, budgets, you're breaking out some of the budgets to more specific line items in the budgets on one of the other budgets. And I know the right to no request will probably end up under legal. Can, can there be a breakout on the legal spreadsheet or another line item that this, these fees are due to right to no request? So we actually have some documentation that says this is right to no request funding, this is other legal issues funding. Is there a way to do that? So at the last Luckman's meeting, I mentioned that we were gonna do that. We were gonna break it out and it would be um, a right to no request line item uh, in the legal budget so that you would be able to see what the cost is for these right to no requests. I did right. bring that to the board at your last meeting. And also, I just wanna make a additional comment as far as elected and appointment officials training. Um, I remember when I first came on board, I was in a club, one of these NH, New Hampshire Municipal Association offers a lot of good classes that will tell you how to do things. It's not about just legal ramifications. It's about knowing your job and getting good input and seeing how problems are solved and addressed. And they're very beneficial. I, I think the first couple of years I was in them like one or two a month. Um, <laughs> and they're very beneficial what a lot of uh, the elected officials don't realize is you don't have to pay for these out of your pocket. They're paid for by the town. They're very low cost. And also now they're offering more of them online so you don't even have to travel to another town to attend them. They're very beneficial. And I encourage any elected official to try to attend some of these classes, especially on the planning board. There's so many regulations on the planning board that you need to learn about land use that you can't just go in a book and read it all. You need instead of making mistakes along the way, you can prevent a lot of mistakes and errors and misunderstandings by attending these classes. They're great classes, they're easy classes, you meet some good people in other communities and they can answer your questions very well. So I just wanna put that out there. Okay, all right. All right, thank you for your report, Mark. Um, go ahead, Jay. Uh, Mark, just a quick question on the, on the CBA piece. You said you put together a negotiations team. I was just curious who is on the team? Yes, uh, Attorney Mayor from DTC Lawyers, uh, Colby, um, Laurie Sadowitz, and the Chief of Police. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions for Mark before we move on? No, okay, thanks Mark. Um, so next item on our agenda, um, we've already reviewed action items. Um, I'm guessing you guys have all signed off on your signature folders. So um, our last thing on the list is selectman reports. Um, John, pardon? John. Yeah. Do you have any reports for us for selectman reports? No. How about you, Julian? Nothing. Nothing since last week. All right, Greg. You want to do the first? Whichever. Go ahead, Greg. Jay. Um, I just wanted to uh, pass on my condolences to the McShehe family. Um, Jack McShee, he passed away um, oh. a couple weeks ago. Uh, he oh. was almost 90. Um, he was in charge of building the gazebo out on the oh. green. Okay. Um, he He's a fellow lion, but he's done yeah. a lot in town. His wife was a librarian at Paulwood School. And um, I just want to take a minute to recognize uh, Mr. McShee. Um, yeah. So, and Thank you just let that. everyone know that he built that that gazebo mm -hmm. out on the green, so. Okay, all right, thank you for that. All right, all right, Greg, y'all, okay. yeah. Okay. Um, so, I, I, you don't have anything? Cause I need I to report. Yes, Go he ahead. does, yep. All right, you do. Yep. Okay, now, are you guys, you hold are. On. Hold on. <laughs> this official certificate is presented to Francine Hart, whereas Francine Hart has served the town of Plasto as a member of the Planning Board, Historic Society, CIP Program Committee, Town Report Committee, Old Home Day Committee, Rockingham Economic Development Corporation, <laughs> Energy Committee, and the Trash and Recycling Advisory Committee, and whereas 
Francine Hott has served as chairwoman of both the budget committee and the select board, and whereas she has provided the town of Plasta with many hours of service, research, dedication, and leadership for the betterment of the town, and whereas she is retiring as chair of the select board as of March 9, 2021, therefore, by the authority vested in us as members of the board of selectmen, we do proclaim that Monday, March 1st, 2021, be declared Francine Hart Appreciation Day in Plasto, <laughs> New Hampshire. Oh oh and we oh encourage all citizens to recognize and appreciate the many enduring contributions of Francine Hart, which have helped to provide a strong citizen-based town government <laughs> and the ability to efficiently deliver needed services to the people of the town. In witness thereof, we have thereunto set our hands and caused to be fixed the great seal of the town of Plasto this first day of March, 2021. Are you guys trying to make me cry on no. camera? <laughs> Come on. Oh, thank you, guys. You got something to say? Like I definitely have something to say. <laughs> um, my report has been, you know, just about almost a year ago, we all sat together for the first time on this board. And I told you guys that your primary responsibility as selectmen was to make sure that you gave every resource and support to our town manager so that he could be successful in doing his job. And from the looks of things, you guys have far exceeded my expectations. You have done a tremendous amount of work this past year, despite COVID. And we couldn't have done any of that without your efforts and your work. And I'm going to tell you guys, you, you men have raised the bar on what it's like to be a selectman in Plasto. And I hope you never forget that. See, you are going to make me cry. <laughs> I hate that. So, so I also would like to thank my wonderful vice chair, Greg Talon, who has been a tremendous amount of support and counsel. And I think most of the stuff wouldn't have gotten done if you hadn't rolled up your sleeve and pitched in and tried to, you know, get some of these projects moving. So um, you were the better half of me this year. So I thank you most humbly for all of your support and your hard work. But most important of all, and certainly not the least, I want to thank thank Beth Hossack, who actually is the real brains behind this whole outfit of truth be told. <laughs> she always makes sure that we always have our paperwork ready for us. Um, we, we always have what we need to do to make good decisions and she keeps us in line legally and she's kept me out of trouble on more than one occasion and more than I care to admit. So um, whoever my successor is, you are going to have a very valuable ally in this wonderful woman. And I thank you most humbly for all of the help and the, and the um, support that you gave me as well. So um, you guys it, move forward, go forth and en enjoy all this wonderful town stuff. And um, thank you so much for this and I will get back at you later, okay? <laughs> not, on, not on television, but I will get back at you. So um, if there is no other um, business tonight, I think the only thing we need to do is um, approve some non-public minutes, and then we need to go into a non-public session for BTLA. Thank you so much for this. This is beautiful, you guys, you brats. <laughs> <laughs> So apparently you didn't listen to me when I said I, I didn't listen. want anything. Thank okay. You. All right. <laughs> I actually want you to. <laughs> so. Okay, right. Bill. Thank you. Bye, Bill. Uh, thank you. Okay, so um, this is a non-public sealed minute dated February 22nd. So if you could read it and just approve the minutes, and if you do want to keep the minutes sealed, um, you'll have to... Uh, put that motion on the floor. Okay. 
I'd like to uh, make a motion to approve these minutes and to keep them sealed. Okay. Second yeah. the motion. All righty. Um, do we, we need a roll call vote for that, Beth? No. No, not to approve minutes, Just right? Just to approve no. them, I don't no. think we do. No. Okay, so all those in favor of keeping these minutes sealed, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Um, okay, that motion carries 500. So we're all caught up on our non public minutes. And so at this time, um, we're going to be leaving the public um, session of our meeting tonight. And we're going to go into non public. We will not be going back into um, public purview. So I'm going to close this meeting at um, 20 minutes of 8, 740. And good night, everybody. And um, I will see you guys at the polls. We got a motion to go to non public. Yeah, could I have a motion to go into non-public? I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> under which? Um, it is under um, L, consideration of legal advice. I will make a motion to go into non-public session under RSA 91-8 colon 3, Roman numeral 2, L, consideration of legal device, advice. Okay, and may I have a second on that motion, please? I'll second. Thank you, Jay. Oh, that's a new one. Thank you. And we're still on TV, so. Yeah, we have to do this in public, so. Okay. Okay, so we need a roll call vote. All those in favor? Ms. Hart. Yes. Italian. Yes. Mr. Kishka? Y yes. Mr. Blinn? Uh, yes. Mr. DeRoche? Yes. Okay, so um, motion carries 500. We will now be going into non public session. So, Dean, I'm going to sign off.